Good evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening, everyone. This good evening, madam. Good evening, madam. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Quite enthusiastic. Good evening, Rita Khandelwal, ma'am. Good Sandhya, evening, ma'am. Thank you for turning on the video so that I know at least there are few people. Uh, actually interacting because of black screen play I am just wanting to look at the names only right thank you everyone and um, thank you Prasanna ji for turning on your video welcome to this session all educators directors coordinators heads of organizations or even educators who have joined this evening to be with me. Thank you, everyone. So let's uh, begin with what exactly I have to share with all of you. Anything anybody would like to say something to Rita Ji, anything that you are expecting specifically from this session, any question of yours, unmute yourself and kindly speak. Uh, Sushmita, can they unmute on their own? Yes, ma'am, they can unmute on their own. Rita, ma'am, unmute yourself and then speak out something. What is your expectation from this session? What are you looking forward to? Your session, ma'am, is very good. You have a lot of sessions. So, whatever you get, it will be very knowledgeable. That's why I want to take you every time. Oh, that's very kind of you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Sushma Yadav, did you say I'm something? I'm very much on? impressed. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Sushma ji, uh, there is disturbance from your system. So either you uh, un just mute yourself, ma'am. Sushma Yadav, if you want to speak something, speak. Otherwise, mute yourself. Sushmita, Sushma Yadav, to mute. karo. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Very warm. Good evening to everyone. I'm so happy to be once again on the platform of Super Teachers because it always gives me a lot of pleasure of sharing the um, content that we have planned and put them into various modules with a lot of effort from each one of the members of super teacher. There's a team of super teacher that works day in and day out to ensure that uh, whatever we present to our educators at whatever level they may be working, heading the organizations or heading the teams of educators as academic coordinators or even managing the whole school as the part of management. Uh, we try to cater and try to produce uh, the modules which are aligned to the current changes that are going on with um, NEP 2020 that has brought in loads of changes into our uh, system. So there will be one or two slides only. I'm sure by this time everybody is aware of what is NEP 2020 and what is it asking for. However, one or two slides just to recap that and then we will talk about what exactly super teacher is offering as GT for you? Golden tetrahedron. For you, for F O U R, for you, F O R for for you. <laughs> so golden tetrahedron for you, for you. And that's created by the team of super teachers after a long work of almost two years since the lockdown when they started. So whatever experience we have had uh, in incorporating the changes and empowering the educators in this last um, two, three years uh, of lockdown and continued from there onwards, I'm sure what we all have to offer to all of you serves each one of you in one form or the other. So how do you pick up? What module do you pick up? And how do you incorporate that into your system would be your choice. However, we are ready for everything. So here I begin with sharing of my presentation. Thank you, Seema ma'am, uh, for turning on the video. I hope I'll be able to do justice to whatever you people are looking forward to. 
So the very first thing probably um, which I have been talking about is what exactly is super teacher offering as part of step up? So step up is super teachers effective pedagogy upskilling program. Okay. ST is for super teacher, E is for effective, P is for pedagogy. The so super teacher effective pedagogy upskilling you program. So we because I'm sure each one of us agrees that and would really I'm sure by this time everybody is in total consensus that upskilling of teachers in order to keep up with the new trends of education that are coming up. Partly because of NEP 2020, which really talks about competency-based education, competency-based assessments, competency-based learning environments. There is a need for teacher at every level, right from kindergarten to class 12, to upskill oneself. That is how super teachers model golden tetrahedon for you, for you, in pursuit of academic excellence. So when you talk about academic excellence, what are the different combinations uh, of processes that we would be sharing and what exactly is GT for you that we would be sharing and how super teacher team can help you out to pick up any one of those modules, whichever you want to do, and then empower your teachers according to that. I'm sure everybody agrees that Corona was one thing that brought all our teachers to adopt to the technology massively because we had to go for online education system, right? Then came NEP 2020 policy. Because we were teaching all this time face-to-face -face traditional classrooms with the students in the classroom, the teaching was entirely different. But with these two master changes partly as catalyst in changing the academic processes. Everybody had to think, rethink that is the way we are teaching all right? Is the way the content is planned all right? Or do we really need to realign our thought processes in planning, assessments, and delivery mechanisms? Everybody had to thought of how we would reimagine the classrooms when they're all going online. Even now, when the schools are partly opening, there is a hybrid system that is working out. How heads of the organizations are working out in order to ensure that every student and teacher who is joining the school as a regular one is not only safe, but also able to bridge the learning gap that were caused by the online education because many of them did not have the approachability or it was too much of the structured work even on the online. Then how did we reinvent ourselves looking at every aspect of content planning, delivery mechanism and assessment? That's what we all the educators did all across the globe. So it gave us a lot of opportunities, especially I think I was very happy that we as teachers could cover up the big technology gap that we all had. Okay, so this is what exactly is Step Up Super Teachers Effective Pedagogy Upskilling Program. And this is a slide uh, simply for compiling few points on the basis of um, NEP 2020, according to you, what is one major change of NEP 2020 that is really hitting us hard and we really have to think, of, think about it? There are so many changes, of course, but what according to you is the most prominent change? You can use your chat to write down the change, your uh, views about that. What is one prominent change? Coding, coding, Meena Laroda, ma'am, thank you so much for responding. But this is one of the skills that has been introduced. What else? That, and let me remind you that Super Teacher is already doing the sessions and trainings on coding, and there is summer camp also going on in case your school is aware of it. Otherwise, get in touch with Super Teacher team, they will do the needful. Right, what else? What is one prominent change with respect to teaching and learning process? 
which has impacted all of us and we really need to take care of 10 bagless days those are happy days <laughs> those are happy days so how do you plan bagless days no bags to be brought to the school okay can opt subject they like oh, that is for the senior classes good enough for your arena ma'am what else what is one change that is applicable all through right from kindergarten uh, artificial intelligence teaching is from preschool itself. The new um, A skills definitely multiple intelligence is targeted in more effective way. Okay, what else? And related to either it is content um, related or it is pedagogy related or is it it is assessment related? So I'll specify more uh, clearly that if it is talking about content, what has happened to that? If it is talking of pedagogy, what has happened to that? Assessments, how have they been impacted? Parulji, master classes of what? I have, you'll have to really put it a little more. More technology, more apps to learn. Dolly Bhargavji, yes, that is what teachers have been doing continuously, but that's not NEP 2020 is talking about certain structural changes in the content itself. What is that? Whosoever has having a background noise, please mute yourself. Yes, to achieve the vision of school in sync with the modern technology, Simanji, yes, we could say that. That is one on nursery to two. To what has happened, uh, Madhulika ji? Three to five, that is the structure of the school system that has changed. Life skills, we already had it. We were always been talking about nothing very special about that. Critical thinking, yes, we can say that one of the skills, student-centered teaching with innovative teaching, innovations, I'm sure we were doing it, but maybe a little lesser. Okay, student-centered, it always had to be like that. Only what else? What else? Come on, teachers, NEP 2020 has been the like just like a Bible all through in the last, um, I think almost since the time July 2020, it was introduced, everybody has been talking about. I'm still not getting that one or two particular points that directly related to this uh, NEP 2020 changes, master changes. Suja Thomas, that is good enough, but what about others? They're almost... 90 plus people in the webinar, there may be others on the uh, YouTube also. So competency-based education, thank God. Madhulika ji, ek to aagaya. Learning by doing Vanishri is definitely the pedagogy approach. Practical-based, we were already doing it. Renu Bala Tripathi, ma'am, what else? 21st century skills to be incorporated in pedagogy, okay affordability, quality, equity, that is the policy matter. Experiential learning, Madhulika ji, good enough. Digitalizing education, digitizing education, uh, that happened automatically. Okay, child center, Indian education at the same level with the international level. So what one word is that? Okay, great. We are talking about competency at the international level. Okay. Uh, teachers, I'm sure when I share the pointers, you will be saying, oh, I knew this. How come this did not come to my mind also? So the, I think the one fundamental change which NEP 2020 brought about was we had to move from structured curriculum to the core curriculum. It talked about that let's reduce the dependency on books. So how the structured curriculum was being changed to competency-based or skill-based curriculum, that is one fundamental change in the curriculum planning itself, which NEP 2020 brought about. And that it talked about core concepts to be taught, higher order thinking skills, 21st century skill-based curriculum uh, needs to be adopted by all school educators. Do we all agree to this? I'm sure everybody knew this. Right? Rita, ma'am, we know that we have to study the core curriculum. Right? We have to study the core curriculum. The fundamental change with the curriculum is that it has to shift from the structured curriculum that we have been doing to core curriculum. That is how we will reduce the 
dependency on textbooks let's see the next one which i have compiled is subject specific focus in isolation this is what we were doing physics chemistry bio math and all that but today nep 2020 says no more silos no more teaching in independent subjects but have interdisciplinary integrated approach to curriculum very specific points nep says about all these points about the curriculum so how do we adopt the interdisciplinary approach integrated approach integrated learning meenal aroda yes ma'am i can see your point out there but these were the fundamental point that are changing so what happens to the next one we were teaching traditional dis disciplines up till now now we are talking about computational thinking artificial intelligence design thinking health and hygiene environmental education and global citizenship education there are many more but i just put down that how we have the had the shift from left what we were doing and right side what we are supposed to be doing as per nep 2020 up till now we used to talk about computer literacy computer knowledge but now we are talking about digital literacy digital proficiency digital tools flip learning hybrid learning blended learning how are we going to put those things into practice how digital technology can be used for it that is what nep 2020 is talking about and one of the very important changes probably is that we are talking about multilingual teaching especially in the k5 segment for sure so regional language teaching in the lower classes for better understanding by the students yes um, gopala krishna sir any question or you are saying thumbs up for the points compiled <laughs> right okay so this yeah this is how a teacher should know an academician or an educator should know to compile the points so that the learner can pick up those points very specifically i hope uh, i made all my points clear to everyone do you think you have there are many more but these are the fundamentals right let's go to one of the biggest changes probably which we all have to take care of is that how supple has been the pilot project in the last year and how it will become a part um, in the years to come regularly for all schools so structured assessments for analyzing learning outcomes learning levels this is what suffal is i'm sure we all must be having the handbooklet from the cbsc website uh, suffal so structured assessments for analyzing learning i'm sure we all know about that uh, previous slide once again uh, okay here it is for um, ma'am who asked for the previous slide mahua ma'am ji i hope it makes sense for you now is it right maybe go to the next one perfectly fine ma'am okay so suffal is the examination the assessment of students at grade 3 5 and 8 level in order to check that the school's um, curriculum has competency levels aligned to the national levels of skills and proficiency to begin with so this policy is for assessing the students not for promoting them not for detaining them but for the school assessment so schools will be assessed by the examination of students at grade 3 5 and 8 levels to find out whether the school is doing the competency based education or not and if they are doing what is the level of the students is it at par with the national levels of skills and proficiency in literacy and numeracy that is how fln foundational literacy and numeracy so the whole idea is saying that it we need not have one examination only our 10th and 12th level it has to be continuous process of assessing the learning outcomes it has to be done by assessment of 
core concepts and knowledge from the national curriculum. So skill assessments is being done by the government initiative, by Ministry of Education, by CBSE, by NCRT combined together working with British Council too. And that is how grade three examination, already we have run the project three, five, eight will be tested on basic literacy, numeracy and foundational skills before the child goes for writing the examination <coughs> of 10th and 12th. So these are the fundamental points of NEP 2020, which we, everyone has to follow whether you like it or not, but that is how it goes upon that. Um, <coughs> Ma'am, there are, there are no question papers. There will be sampling done by the concerned organization. <coughs> National Achievement Survey. They will be picking up the students from different uh, samples and and then conducting the uh, students' assessments. So your school will be assessed by sample students from grade three, five, and eight levels gradually in order to ensure that. So schools will not have a question paper for that, right? So let's see then how. <laughs> NEP competency based education, what does it talk about? That there are curriculum reforms. Core curriculum has changed, right? Then we are talking about the pedagogy shift, inquiry based learning, learning by doing, um, creating environments which are in which students are engaged, integrated approach to curriculum, technology-based education, teaching strategies. This is what we all will have to adapt. Role of technology, whether you use flipped learning, hybrid learning, or you will use blended learning, how technology will become part and parcel of your pedagogy. How assessments, I'm sure everybody has already experienced the board examination of 10th and 12th as competency-based assessments. The term one examination for both classes 10th and 12th and 9th to 12th that happened. So how competency-based assessments are becoming a norm with NEP 2020. And therefore, we have to talk about competency-based education, where we can talk about higher order thinking skills and 21st century skills. So fundamentally, you talk about curriculum, you talk about pedagogy, you talk about assessments, and you talk about role of technology, the four fundamental components of teaching learning process. So what curriculum, what we are teaching, and why we are teaching is very, very important because one has to talk about the relevance to real life situation. Instruction means pedagogy is how you are teaching, what kind of methodology you are using in order to deliver the content. And then very important, whether students have learned or not. So it becomes a very important part for all the academicians to be aware of what is happening, what should be adopting and how should we incorporating this into our classrooms. Now, if I want to compile the whole slide of this into few visuals that you are seeing on the screen, what is the topmost um, that rectangle that you are seeing on the screen represents what? Knowledge, understanding, skill, quantum. Uh -huh, that is there, but what does it represent? Academic excellence. Understanding levels of the children. Uh, okay. Any particular, just somebody wanted the previous slide. I'm just showing it once again. Not this one, ma'am. Another one. Ma'am, you have which one? Competency based education. Ah, this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So we thank have you. here. So what does this represent? Let Bloom's taxonomy. Simran, ma'am, thank you so much. Madhulika ji, thank you so much because these are cognitive levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy, one of the domains is cognitive domain where we talk about this and how this Bloom's taxonomy will become a part of the whole process of teaching learning. 
this image represents completely that process. How the child will be helped to construct the knowledge. So theory of constructivism, where the child learns by doing, how do you link the experience to learning would be the master um, point of teaching learning process. Right? Yes, teachers need to go for this thing, but anyway, the straight away in the name is cognitive levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Of course, they are now the new Bloom's taxonomy says remembering, understanding, uh, applying, analyzing, uh, evaluating, and then synthesizing. So everything has been changed from noun to an action verb so that everybody is continuously provide, continuously improvising. Creativity is one of the skills, Mahua Ma'am, of 21st century skills, right? Okay, so this is the learning, teaching, and assessment process that we talked about in the previous slide as aligned to Bloom's taxonomy. Now, the big question is with our students, more techno savvy, almost I'm sure we all agree that more techno savvy than us, how will we engage them into teaching learning process? So, how do you create that innovative edge? How do you have the art of creating the engaging learning environment, the science of innovative curriculum? And finally, you have pedagogical innovations. So how are we going to put down all these things together? Right? So for the coming generation, which is so tuned and the latest thing coming up as metaverse and uh, artificial intelligence we're already talking about. Please keep yourself mute if you're not answering on this because background noise becomes difficult for to handle, right? Okay. Now, what exactly is golden tetrahedron for you for you model? Now, let me show you this. So, if you were to put four phrases starting with you, as related to teaching learning process, what would they be? Come on, let's have from all educators. What what do you think uh, these four you would represent to four teaching processes, teaching learning processes? Understand what, Raja Ji? Thank you so much. But Sudhya Thomas, understanding of what? Understand or understanding? That's okay. Next, what else? We have to talk about the understanding the child needs. Understanding the child needs would be part of something. What integrated learning will be part of something. What are those four main phrases we talk we talk about? Let's have let's have few guesses. <laughs> okay, let me give you that. First, you of ours is understanding the curriculum. Yes, the theme understanding of curriculum will help us as one of the components of golden tetrahedron. The second one will be upskilling the pedagogy. That if the curriculum has changed from traditional to core curriculum, then how do we change uh, the pedagogy? The third one definitely will be upgrading the assessments. And the last one is utilizing the technology. So four use of golden tetrahedron, as you can see on this screen, understanding the child would fall into one of these four categories wherever you think, right? So these are four components. The few components of each one of them, I'm just showing that. Of course, super teacher would be sending you the complete file as a proposal. Um, but these are the few components points that we would be covering up in the four modules. So when you talk about curriculum planning, skill-based curriculum, how do we really put everything into that? Sorry. Uh, and then how do we really go for pedagogical practices? Then how do we assess? And then how do we utilize technology? Do you think we cover up as super teacher team all the components of uh, teaching learning process 
as related to the new trends, MEP 2020. Yes or no? Let me see on the chat. Thumbs up for the super teacher team, those who have worked out to create these modules as one package of GT for you. Does it cover up? Do you think any point we have left out? Any point that you would like to add? Right, so thank you so much for your yes. Uh, if you have any suggestions, do put it up. Okay, great. Okay, now let me give you the illustration of each one of them with something or the other. So let me show you the uh, chapter of heat, which is grade seven. Um, this is the mind map of that. And you, you see the yellow part, they are the specific concepts that have been covered in the NCRT or CBSE book uh, in the chapter of heat. Now, how will you go for understanding the curriculum? The first part of gt 4 u model is that how do I have the concept and the corresponding relationship? Concept, you can see in the first column, you see the whole concept, the measuring temperature. In the second column, we have mentioned the learning outcomes. I'm sure you all know that there is a learning outcomes PDF released by the NCRT long back for all classes from class 1 to 12, uh, aligning the concept and the learning outcome. How do you measure learning outcomes? What are the learning objectives? And then how are they aligned to PISA, the competency international competency that we are talking about. This is what NEP 2020 is expecting as the part of curriculum change. Similarly, you see thermometer, transfer of heat, everywhere you have learning outcomes, learning outcomes, how do you measure them, what are the learning objectives, and how are they related to PISA. Every concept of that, at least we will try during the course, uh, example from every subject to be covered up so that we can understand that how concept from a chapter can be aligned to learning outcomes. How do we measure the learning outcome? And how do we have our learning objectives defined as per the Bloom's taxon? And then see that how that is aligned to the international competency as specified by PISA examination, right? Now let us look at the first question, which of the following conducts more heat? I'm not looking forward for the answers, but I just want you to tell me at what level we are assessing the child. If you ask this question, cognitive levels of Bloom's taxonomy, just now we did it. So at what level we are talking about? Which level uh, question is this? Which of the following conducts more heat? Knowledge. Knowledge best, knowledge based level. This is the first one, recall or knowledge level, which we can structure knowledge, right? Now let's see the, if the question is being changed to this one. Rhea pours milk into the, like you see there are four cups or four cups of different materials. So she has put the milk into four different cups and then she measures temperature up after five minutes. After that, the graph has been plotted. And now the student is expected to um, find out the MC, sorry, find out the MCQ question, which has been written there. We are just interested in knowing the only, the only the level at which we are talking about. So application level, understanding and analysis. So do you look at the questions, the way questions change related to the same level, right? So how do we learn how to create these kinds of questions as a line to this? Let's look at the next one. Before that, how does this um, question talks about the interpreting data and evidence scientifically as per the competency and learning outcome that child should have been able to plot the graphs and interpret the graphs, right? So we should be able to understand and explain everything that we're talking about. Let's look at the next question. Now she pours hot milk into four different cups. And then we are expected to know from the child that after five minutes, which one of them will be having the coldest milk. 
answer is not required from you as educators, but the level of question at what cognitive level domain of Bloom's taxonomy, the learning outcome is being assessed. So that will be our uh, effort in order to realize through this program for the educators that how do we convert our concept, my subject, history, civic geography, into this competency and learning outcome alignment, right? Similarly, what happens to the question when it is reframed? So how do you have from the same chapter, the questions being aligned at different levels of competency and assessment? That we'll be talking about the skill-based curriculum or understanding the curriculum, the first corner of the golden tetrahedron model. <coughs> okay. Similarly, there's a further question that has been uh, reframed that what parameters you should change. <coughs> so how we are talking about that, what the child can do to explore the experiment beyond what has been done already in the class. Again, alignment to competency and learning outcomes. How does it make a difference for all of us? I hope uh, we got some idea about how we are going to work about the skill-based curriculum, right? Okay, so I'll compile the whole stuff into few visuals that curriculum, it used to be concept, knowledge, and facts earlier, but it has to be now competencies. And competencies have to be aligned with the curriculum, application, analysis, and synthesis of concepts and facts, and in relation to real life scenarios. So whatever questions we had, we have put milk into different cups, then we have parameters, which will become the coldest. So all these are something that is happening in the child's life all around it. Even the NCRT, CBSC mode talks about that every context, every knowledge has to be related to the competencies. As you can see, whether it is context here or it is knowledge here, everything has to be related to the uh, competency. So that is how the understanding curriculum will work out. Compiling the whole stuff that this is how it will work out. So we'll have all have to align ourselves, the thought process to NCRT and then talk about competencies, then talk about whatever we can do within our school system in order to really adopt that. Is it right? Okay. Now upskilling the pedagogy, what does exactly mean? Pedagogical approaches as per NEP 2020, I'm sure we are all familiar with, but still I'm putting all of them for you all there. Now, what exactly each one of them, now when you talk about inquiry-based learning, we are talking about developing the scientific temper. When we are talking of technology-enabled, it is engaging techno-savvy learners. When we are talking of interdisciplinary, we are talking of bridging silos approach to subject, which NEP 2020 wants all of us to do that. Experiential, then it is also talking about connecting these subjects. Experiential learning, how do we develop higher order thinking skills? Spiral learning, how do we create deep learning environments and reinforcing the concepts? Hands-on learning, 21st century skills, all that process, this is the complete, uh, it may not be complete as for the module, but as far as today's session is concerned, the pedagogical approaches talk about all these stuff. There is so much to learn in every um, pedagogical approach that we would be doing that. We will be illustrating with various examples and all that. But I hope this diagram makes it quite a lot clear that what are the pedagogical approaches as per NEP 2020 and what are they aiming at? Uh, yes or no, teachers, everybody out there are we in alignment with the thought process? May I see some of you moving your hands on the screen or somewhere or the other. So this is what we are talking about, that pedagogical approaches. These are only the names, but how do I apply them to my classroom? How do I use technology? How do I use uh, the manipulatives? How do I use other um, strategies? This is only an 
Hubbard's eye view of what the various pedagogical approaches are and what do they mean exactly for all of us as part of educators who would implement them, right? Uh, most of them will be doing it. However, some of them I will try to um, really take up. I'll take up one of them. Uh, this we saw earlier also in the previous diagram. I want to uh, understand from you what exactly this spiral going up and down means. As you can see, this is called as spiral teaching learning approach. What does it mean? The student should return to the same topic several times throughout their school career in order to reinforce learning. How do you increase the depth of a concept to be taught by the student? How do you relate it to the prior knowledge? And this was strategy was developed in 1960 by Brunner, the cognitive theorist. So we will see to it how we can really relate the concepts of what vertical connection of concepts, the simple word for all of us to understand. And the next one. Now let's see what exactly is uh, the action by all of you. If you put all these squares, uh, dots on your um, paper or wherever you're working, how many squares can you create in this fig figure by connecting four dots? Let me see quickly the answer. You can draw, put these dots on your system and let's see how many squares can you draw. What is the response of the participants to draw squares in such a way that corner of every square is on one of these dots? How many squares can you draw? Five, maybe. Oh, oh Divya Sharma ji, ten. That one, you, you really, please, please screen, uh, scan the image and show it to, to all of us that how did you make ten? Five, okay, Mini Chauhan, everybody, five, Vanishri, five, 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 five. five. Only Divya Sharma has got 10, so I'm probably towards the end, she will have to show her. Please, ma'am, use a black pen or colored pen different ways in order to show it to us that how did you make uh, 10. However, uh, yes, somebody said 9 also. Please keep your things ready to be shared. <laughs> Noor Jahan, ma'am, th thank you so much. Going beyond the numbers, you are all 5 and you are all 9 and you are all 10. So how you involve the students, how do you really make them work and how do you show them it is fine. Let me show you what students did it when it was done with us. Deepthi Sharma has also got 10. My God, I'll have to Deepthi Sharma and then Divya Ji and then one more. Noor Jahan, ma'am. Okay. Anyway, nice effort by all of you. This is one of the things which everybody must have got it. Please, as you are all educators, do not annotate the screen. Sushmita, please disable that. Oh, ma'am, uh, you have an option uh, because you are sharing the screen. You can stop the annotation, ma'am. I'll have to really stop that and doing something else. Okay, this is the second thing the children did it. How did they make it the bigger ones? I'll see it afterwards. Now... Please, teachers, uh, we are all here for learning. If you are not interested, you may, I mean, there's no compulsion for you to be here. Let's not do that. We'll be killing each other this time if I go back to do the settling only, right? So this is what is metacognition. When you think beyond the normal, learning how to learn is fundamental to that thinking that how self-reflections On what I do, what can I do better? Renu Balan, quite a few people can make nine or ten good enough for us, right? So how do you go beyond the normal? That's what is the metacognition. I just want to show you one of the strategies for metacognition, that is visual thinking strategies. So you can use a relevant visual and ask thought-provoking questions. So basically, fundamental three questions which we visual thinking strategies talk about is. What is going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? And what more can we find it out? 
Now let me show you that with one uh, um, image out here. I'm sure each one of us knows what we're talking about, but how do you interact with the student is very, very important. So very first question, describe what you see in the poster. Then why do you say so is it? It's not that what you are saying. Why and so justify what you are saying. Why do you say that? And then, <coughs> <clears throat> Simran, ma'am, uh, there are some people who would really like to go back every now and then. Anyway, this is the previous slide. Visual thinking strategies, what is going on in this picture? What do you say that makes so that what can we find out? Show a relevant visual and ask thought-provoking questions. Now I'm giving you an example with this. Now, what what kind of questions? Perfectly fine, similar, ma'am. Thank you. Now, idea is not about draw, the idea is that how will you in interact with the student? Describe what you see in the poster is the first question to so let the children have described the language in the right kind of vocabulary, then why do you say so? Why do I say it is a drought situation that we're talking about? Because I see this, because I see that. First picture, second picture, third picture, fourth picture, what is happening? And then what do you think you know about the issue raised here? So what do you know about this issue? Which all areas in India to begin with are affected by this? Where do you think it might be happening? Then... What would you like to uh, like to explore about this and how? So how do you give an option to the student? You have thought provoking interaction with the students and then make them work. It becomes a research kind of work, collaborative work, cooperative work, group project in order to find out that what is happening. We did this especially in the Pilani group um, for when they did it for their own campus only, that what are the problems and how they can find it out and sort it out because Rajasthan definitely has got a lot of water issues. Okay. So making thinking visible, now that invites students to develop, display, verbalize their thought process. So that, that is how we help the child that what you know is put into words, explained it into words, right? Okay, the next um, corner of the golden tetrahead in GT for you is understanding the assessment. So how do you design assessment, competency-based assessment that we have been talking about, right? <coughs> okay, these are different points that we're talking about. Again, uh, I think we have had complete series of competency-based assessments, uh, three or four days programs individually for each one of the schools to explain that what exactly is happening in this and how do we train our teachers for that. So different types of assessment paradigms and all these things that we will talk in this module are these few of the pointers out here. In any case, if you fill up the form for this, your um, Super teacher team would be sending you the complete detail on what are the components of these modules, which are the ones that you can choose, how many hours, all details are there. So assessments, how they are related to teachers and how they are related to students. So we'll talk everything in detail, explain uh, when we are going in for this module, particularly assessment one. Upgrading the assessments, we will be talking about these different kinds of assessments also, which even CCE was talking about when we were doing this. Now, which one is right or wrong is not the question, but which one we use where and how is the question. So in your curriculum, when you are doing the assessments, how will you incorporate these various kinds of assessments into your system? <coughs> So assessment of learning, for learning, as learning, and in learning. Then what CBS is talking about is because there have been so many workshops on competency-based assessments. 
So how do we frame questions that allow students to demonstrate different kinds of competencies? How do we have students framing questions where conceptual understanding and skills and strategic thinking is being assessed? And to begin with, probably we can start transforming the textbook questions into competency-based questions. So how will we talk about various kinds of assessments and uh, very soon we are maybe launching the competency-based three days program also. So you can get in touch with the team of super teacher. Um, maybe the second week of May, we will be doing that competency-based assessment, three days program specifically covering up all these types of simple and complex MCQs with illustrations of examples from almost all subjects in different ways will be done. So if you're interested and if you want to find out more, get in touch with the team of super teachers. Uh, so Shmita, you can fill up the, put up the form for that. Competency-based yes. assessments, how do you upskill yourself? How do you talk about English and mass competencies? All these parameters will be discussed and all this reading material will also be shared with all of you. I'm sure we all have it, yet it will be given by the super teacher team as a part of this program for all of you, right? How do you utilize the technology? We have been using a lot, but then I think, um, this lockdown gave us a lot of opportunities and super teachers started with that uh, empowering teachers how to use technologies, open education resources, every tool that we talk about. We were running almost 14 hours program, seven days a program for empowering teachers for utilizing the technology. I think one of the best programs the super teacher has done by empowering a large number of uh, students, uh, sorry, large number of educators on how to utilize technologies, starting from the normal tools to artificial intelligence and the latest one, Metaverse, also to be added. And we have our expert guy, Vasudev Natarajan, to do that on AI. And we have another uh, sources team, resource persons and super teacher team who will be doing that. So think about what your school is looking forward to, what you want to work upon that. This is what is GT for you that we as super teacher team are looking forward to improving the academic standards, enhancing pedagogical statements, giving you the benchmarking performance with the national and international levels. And how do you digitize the whole school system? The golden tetrahedral for you model is a comprehensive academic program to transform the whole process. However, you can pick up any one of the modules in accordance with your requirements and you can get in touch with the super teacher team for that. And with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and have your feedback to tell us that where does it fit into your system, whatever we have talked about. Yes, it's open to discussion and questions from your people, the participants, the educators at whatever level you might be working about. Yes, please, your questions and your feedback, please. Yes, Vita, ma'am, you are the only one I can see. Rest are probably they are behind the screen. So <laughs> unmute yourself and let us see that uh, how much useful was this one hour for you? Uh, Seema, if you would like to unmute yourself, please go do it and then tell us that how does it fit into your school system? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. The session was very good. What all you provided along with means your presentation actually made the concept very clear. So, right. like, no, it is very useful, like, every day. Yeah, as you uh, said in the first thing that when I show you exactly, you will be recollecting 
that this I knew or this I knew. Mm. So just for memorizing, I think your presentation should be with us. So like, you know, anytime we can get connected to it and we can, uh, what you say, compare in our daily teaching. Yeah, so yeah. I like the session very much. Interesting. Which school you are from? Eh? Uh, right now I'm serving in Latur, MIT group. Okay. Any particular module, if you think your school needs, you can get in touch with the super teacher team in order to get help for that, right? Thank, thank you. you so much, man. Thank you. Anybody else who, who has any questions or who would like to ask anything about the program? Please fill in the form for your Nurjahan, ma'am, useful to care. This is good enough, but what you need for your school and how it can help, how the super teacher team can help you out, please do that. <coughs> sure, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Mira, ma'am. Anybody who is wanting to speak or wanting to ask anything about what your school needs and what super teacher can do for you, you can uh, please unmute yourself and speak it out or fill in the form for the information. Ipsita Mishra, ma'am, you want to speak or you just raise your hand for what? <laughs> you have any questions? I think with that, we close our session for today and then whatever your queries are, we do fill in the form before you leave the session so that the super teacher team can get back to you. Thank you, everyone, Reena, Ruchita, Sarabjit. Thank you, everyone, for putting that word. If you have any questions, get back to the teacher team. Divya Sharma, Prachi, ma'am, Mahuaji. Thank you so much, Meera. Everyone, thank you. Thank you, Nurjahan, ma'am. Roshni, ma'am. Thank you so much. Rumji, thank you. Ji, ma'am, similar, ma'am. Oh, it will be wonderful and awesome, Seema Ji, only when we can do something for your school. <coughs> uh, for certificate and all that, whatever the issue is, please uh, ask the super teacher team because I am only the resource person. Thank you, Patul Khan ji. Thank you so much, Pishpa Rani ji. Okay, wish you all the very best for the evening ahead. Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful week. And thank you so much for sparing your time to be with this evening. Uh, my pleasure conducting this session for all of you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye from me. Thank you so much, ma'am. Have a good day. Thanks a lot, ma'am. My pleasure, Ravindra ma'am. Take care. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay protected. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am. Ma so when we will have the next one, madam?